How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at effective nuclear charge. So our objectives are to describe what effective nuclear charge is, as well as how to calculate it, and describe why effective nuclear charge is important. So let's start with talking about attractive and repulsive forces. So we know that electrons have a negative charge, and they're attracted to the nucleus because the nucleus has a positive charge. So we know that these negative electrons are being attracted to that nucleus because they have opposite charges. They're also simultaneously repulsed by other electrons because like charges repel. So this negative charge and this negative charge, they're repelling each other. So which one's going to win, right? Kind of think of it that way. We also have this thing called shielding, and it, it does pretty much what you think the word shield means. So electrons are attracted to the positive nucleus, right? We've got a big old positive nucleus. We have these negative electrons, and they're being attracted towards the center. Even this second energy level electron is being pulled towards the nucleus because of the attraction and charges. But we know that between this electron and the nucleus, there's these electrons. So what's happening is some shielding. So as much as this electron is being attracted to the positive nucleus, these electrons are kind of creating like a negative shield around that nucleus because they're in between that outer electron and the inner one. So we get some shielding going on, meaning this electron isn't going to feel the same pull towards the nucleus as these electrons are. This is where effective nuclear charge comes into play. This is how we can explain some stuff. So the net charge in electron experiences in an atom is the effective nuclear charge. So if we take a look, this nucleus has three protons, so we know its nuclear charge is plus three. These electrons are going to feel that entire plus three, so their effective nuclear charge is going to be plus three. But if I'm looking at this electron, same nucleus, plus three, but there's shielding going on because of those electrons in a lower energy level. So what is the effective pull or attraction, the charge from the nucleus that this guy is going to feel? So this is how I calculate it. We have the effective nuclear charge notated as ZF, and it's the charge of the nucleus from the protons, right? So we take a look, there's protons in the nucleus, they're positively charged, which is Z, that tells us the you know, number of protons minus the shielding electrons. So if I'm taking a look, this electron right here, uh, it is, all right, let's just do the math. Effective nuclear charge is gonna equal the number of protons, which is plus three, minus the shielding electrons for that inner shell, it's zero. So it's gonna feel that entire plus three. But if I'm taking a look at the outer rings, okay, it's a little bit of a different story. The effective nuclear charge is gonna equal still that plus three, because it's the same nucleus, we got three protons, minus how many electrons are shielding? Well, I got this one and that one, so minus two. So the effective nuclear charge that this electron is feeling is equivalent to plus one. So let's do uh, just a bunch of practice. How about that? First energy level. If I'm taking a look at this electron, all right, well, there's 16 protons in that nucleus. I changed my nucleus up, so it's going to be 16 minus how many shielding electrons? Zero, which tells me 16. Second energy level. All right, so let me just look at this electron. It's the same nucleus, so 16 minus, well, now how many shielding electrons are there? Here's one. There's two. So my effective nuclear charge is really just a positive 14. So these electrons in the second ring are going to feel as if it's experiencing a plus 14 nuclear charge. And the third energy level, again, same nucleus, so it's 16 minus, well, how many shielding electrons do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and ten electrons that are shielding and in the way so that third energy level is going to be experiencing a plus six nuclear charge so the effective nuclear charge for that third ring in this example is plus six so what who cares why are we bothering with this all right well effective nuclear charge can explain a lot about the patterns we see on the periodic table for example if we were talking about atomic radius it'll help explain which atom should be bigger so here I picked sodium and sulfur to look at. They are in the same period, so they have the same number of principal energy levels of three. But let's take a look at how their electrons experience effective nuclear charge. So if I'm looking at the first shell, for sodium, there's 11 protons minus the shielding electrons, which is zero. So they are experiencing a plus 11 effective nuclear charge. Now we look over to sulfur on this side, there's a plus 16 in the nucleus minus, again, zero shielding electrons. 
So they're experiencing a plus 16. So it's a different experience for those two electrons. These electrons are feeling more of a pull than these electrons are. So let's see, second shell. Again, same number of protons, 11 minus, well, let's see how many are in the way of this electron. There's two shielding electrons. So it experiences a plus nine effective nuclear charge. Same process on this side, 16 minus, again, there's count them one, two shielding electrons. So they're experiencing a plus 14 effective nuclear charge. Third shell, this electron, again, it's 11 minus, how many shielding are there? Well, now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten shielding electrons. It's experiencing an effective nuclear charge plus one. And if I take a look over at sulfur, what are these electrons feeling? Well, there's 16 protons minus how many are shielding. Again, I count, there's 10. So those in the third shell are feeling a plus six effective nuclear charge. So now, which one would you expect to be smaller? Well, I know that opposites attract. So if these electrons are feeling more of a pull from the nucleus in the sulfur atom than they are in the sodium atom, sulfur is going to be the smaller one, all because of the effective nuclear charge. So when you're looking in the same period, which tells you you have the same number of electron shells, the atom with the greater effective nuclear charge or greater atomic number will be the smaller sized one, even though it's more massive. So now don't get confused between mass and size. So massive just tells you how much stuff is there, the mass. The size tells you how big it is. So if I take a look, sodium has a mass of 22.99 ANU and a radius of 190 picometer, picometers. But if I take a look at sulfur, it's got a more massive atom, so there's more stuff to it, but it's packed into a smaller package because of the effective nuclear charge. It's greater in sulfur than it is in sodium. So summarize, describe what effective nuclear charge is and what effect it has as well as how to calculate it and describe why the effective nuclear charge is important. I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.